So let's check out here the Kandao Seeing to Believe. Hi. Hello. Hi. So uh, please introduce yourself. I'm Johan Romero. I'm CTO of a company called Mimo Areo. And we do live streaming. We have a platform for content collaboration and streaming all in real time. Uh, what we're showcasing here is new cool technology. As you can see, it's a really compact one U edge compute unit. We can do AK in all flavors. We have different modules here. So we can have an AK SDI like what we're showcasing here. So we can capture up to AK60. Uh, we can do also AK HDMI N, all flavors of AK basically. And it's really compact. It's the uh, smallest AK encoder in the world. Um, we call it the Molink. So we're showcasing this. As well, we're showcasing what we're working on. It's called the Tiny Sync. So um, a small compute unit as well. We can, we can capture 4K60 and then we can decode 8K60 through HDMI. We're embedding a 5G modem into it. We're still in development of the unit. Um, but yeah, we can do a lot of things. For example, you can connect your camera and once you do recording, your camera can push proxies to it. And then this will automatically upload files to the cloud. So is it, uh, do you talk about what chipset you have in the little box there? Yeah, we're using basically, this one is um, based on our ARM processor, it's our Rockchip uh, SOC. So uh, it could be the 3588 or something like that, 3568? We're testing, we're testing yeah. multiple flavors of it. Um, and this, this could go directly on my camera, potentially? Yes, you can just connect the HDMI end of your camera and then you can capture you can capture even 422 if your camera is capable of. Um, but what is this rack here mainly for? I mean, we're basically taking a DIT car and then making it, you know, for, you know, we have a UPS here, um, a power station, and then we have, we're showcasing, you know, three of our molding encoders. This can act as an encoder, this can act as a decoder, and we have a black magic switch here so we can do, you know, productions. Uh, multiple AK sources and then live stream them, recording. And through our partnership with Kandao, we're showcasing the Obsidian Pro. You can shoot up to 12K 3D. Okay. What you say? 12K. 12K. And again, it's a 360 camera, so you have multiple lenses. And as you can see, you can look around it. What is uh, good about this camera is that can shoot raw. So. 12K raw, and we can do live streaming 8K30, which is really unique. It's one of the most powerful um, 360 cameras ever produced. Uh, and then multiple other solutions. Uh, with, with them, we're also showcasing this tiny camera. It's a um, Type C camera that you can you connect to your phone, and then you turn your phone into you know a 360 camera. Really simple by just connecting this. Um, other technology that they have here is this. This is new. So um, this shoots um, 8K 3D, 180, okay? And then it connects to Ethernet, goes to the switch, then goes to Candle Stream, which is the software. And then from here you can basically stream. Did you say 8K 3D? Yep. 180. 180. 180 degrees? Or yes. 180 frames it's basically per second? all of this. You can actually preview it through the headset. It's all of it, 180 degrees. Yeah. And this will be for, in particular, to shoot you know, content for the Apple Vision Pro and any you know, platform that supports a VR 180. Nice. Other cameras for volumetric. So this is kind of for volumetric capture. And the idea is that you put multiple of these cameras uh, to shoot outwards, inwards capture, right? And then multiple of these cameras shooting at the same time produce volumetric content, right? That you can then put the headset and then walk around the, the subject, um, all in volumetric. Um, small cameras also capable of AK. This is the Kandao uh, Obsidian Pro, capable of shooting AK video, also AK live. AK As live? We, yeah. From this little camera right there? Yes. And then I'll show you something even crazier, uh, smaller, capable of AK. 
So, uh, showcasing also here the Candal um, 3 Ultra. This, is, this was announced here. It's not yet for the public, but this can shoot 8K. What is the good thing about this? Look, an action cam, really small, portable. You can take it anywhere. Trade shows and then capture every single view, right? 8K capable. That might be out of battery. The good thing about this one is that um, it has this Type-C port, and then you can add, you know, other peripheral, peripherals, like, for example, Ethernet or HDMI out. So, um, and then this is the Candao Eagle, Kukam Eagle, and then you can, obviously, they will not appreciate the tree because this is, um, right? But then you can shoot. It's not a live field, no. It's a no. It's, it's for recorded. Yeah. Yeah. And the good no. thing about this camera is that you can shoot, right? You shoot this way with the camera, like this, content, and then you can preview it with your. Oh wow! Right there. Right there. That's so shoot amazing. and preview. Wow. So that's the Candao Eagle. <clears throat> so, how is it possible to do 8K in a small form factor like this? It's got some of these new chipsets are really powerful yes. then, no? AK30. Yeah, exactly the chipset. I don't know uh, exactly which one is integrated in this one, but it's, it's really powerful. AK30 and this small unit. Um, How to define AK when it's 360? Because you have uh, two lenses. What is that? The full so thing is AK? You require uh, a powerful SOC because first of all you need to do stitching which is combining two cameras right into one and then you can produce high quality why is important high quality in VR in 360 because you need the highest quality because you will be looking into a portion right and then this portion if you don't if you don't have the enough resolution then it will look pixelated so the more quality and resolution we get the more you can read text um, and then this could be uh, this could be AK Live? Yes, as well. Uh, so, my ultimate dream is, uh, I mean, what, not my ultimate, but one dream I have is to have this on a table at, with the family, everybody eating lunch, dinner, and then uh, the parents, the grandparents can tune in with a live 4K VR yeah. headset, and, and they uh, can be at the table. And, and let me show you that. Your dream is, 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 really? is, is a reality now. Let me show you. Yeah. So. This is the meeting, yeah, Candao meeting so solutions. All you have to do is go here. Add an iframe to the web It's a whole look, Me, especially for meetings in 360. So come and sit down. And then I'll show you. So this is all in one Just touch screen, two screens on both sides. And then once someone joins into the, obviously we need to change the layout in here. Let me, um, see if I can change the color type you see and then it will start automatically detecting oh. the speakers and then creating new views for them so you see it's detecting this person over here is detecting you and as soon as I join into the into the view it will oh, automatically okay. divide what it into when you walk around? it will just disappear it will disappear from from the view and then it will be just this and then two people and if you well, let, let's say you go just over there it will follow me it will follow my face And then as soon as I join into view, as you can see, I'm in the other side and then I'm still, and then all of the normal apps for conferencing are here. Let me show you. So you have, I was showing you the camera tool, but you have all conferencing platforms here. We're also adding Nidmo here as well, but BlueJeans, you know, WebS, Zoom, Zoom, Teams, all in here. So this is only one unit. And then this is, a type C connects to your your to your laptop and then it's the same thing. Is it 8K? No, this one is, is, is uh, a little bit lower resolution, 4K. But the idea is, is for meetings, right? So nice. Uh, is it possible that somebody could be remotely wearing a VR glass and and uh, uh, choose where they want to look instead of just looking exactly where you are? Yeah. So you live streaming here. the whole thing out. So if you come here, let me see if it is it, is it streaming to the headset already or no? Yeah. Let me. But let me do the calibration. Yeah. Celebrating. 
how, how uh, describe a little bit the, the colleagues in the at the Kandao. Uh, how I these mean, guys? So as you can see, you know, Kandao is producing the best uh, quality resolution, the craziest 360 camera technology. That you have craziest. Ever the craziest. In the world. Yeah. And even for for VR 180, which is also coming up really really hot with the Apple with the Apple Vision Pro release. I want these eyes on my next robot. <laughs> um, is that or, or I want to do a calibrator. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Come, come here because he's yeah. going to oh, calibrate. Sorry. I'm uh, hard to calibrate. Uh, Why you think calibration is important? Because once you're once you're doing a stereo, right? You need to be able to basically correct for the vertical offsets because you are shooting with fish eyes and they are super super. Um, stretch and then you need to correct for any vertical offset color dispar disparity as well so you get the best and perfect um, stereo effect uh, this live yep all right try it yourself do you think my camera will pick anything up no in no because no. i mean it will it will if, if you it will just pick can you hold it one second i'm just sure. gonna zoom what happens so uh, what, what are the what are these glasses these are the Pico VR if I'm not mistaken yeah Pico VR okay I'm gonna try to watch can you film me yeah of course okay I don't understand what I'm seeing it's so oh my god I can see myself now okay 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 this is scary All right, this is, uh, <laughs> okay, so are these, these are not 4K uh, micro displays, are they? Uh, I don't know exactly the specifications of the, of the Pico VR headset, but, but it's similar to the Quest, it's similar to the Quest, um, the Meta Whoa. Quest 3. Yeah. It's hard to describe what I, what I just entered. Can you describe what happened? Because basically these two cameras are, uh, recording the whole 3D area. So what this is trying to um, to simulate is your eyes, how your eyes see the, perce the perception of the space, right? So the distance between the lenses are similar to the distance of your eyes, right? But the difference is your eyes have a limited view. This is capturing almost 180 degrees, a little bit more, right? Then through the software, we're doing post-processing, so we correct for any vertical offset, color, um, discrepancies, so it's best, best stereo. On both cameras, they will look exactly the same. And then, through through the software, we're generating an HLS stream that we can view live. So, um, describe a little bit uh, your project. Uh, what's your vision? What's what do you want to see in the future? So, yeah, is it for live streaming? In minimum, what we're trying to achieve is basically. Uh, imagine like a zoom on asteroids where you can bring people, but not only people, but devices as well. You can bring cameras like yourself and then bring people to collaborate in real time, right? Annotations in real time, drawing in real time, and then push things into, you know, social network and other streaming platforms. Hyper creative platform. Yep. Cloud native platform, connect devices, people and ideas. I see 8K plus bi-directional remote collaboration, lowest latency. Um, yeah. it, I've been trying to live stream a little bit the last year, couple of years. Uh, it's, it's challenging, especially in uh, CES, is uh, so much electronics. What is the solution? Uh, do you have a so solution? For, we have a solution that we'll be integrating in the tiny thing, and also as well as the Molin KK encoder. Since this is peripheral base, we're basically building uh, an add-on card that you'll be able to install and it has 4G, uh, 4 or 5G monitors into it. And then we're doing something called multi-link aggregation to combine them all and then give you a bigger pie. What is that important for you doing a streaming, right? So, so you'll be able to push live having, without having to you know, fight with others. As well, we support um, private 5G as well. Private 5G, is, does that exist all over the world? Or it's only some places where the carrier is doing that. Exactly. So you need to talk to a carrier. We're partners with T-Mobile. We're part of the T-Mobile Accelerator. 
and then we're with Timol doing a combined solution with their private 5G and our solutions on Nidmo. What's the doing what's the bit rate possible? The, the great thing about the 5G private is that it's super low latency for video. That's important for live streaming video, right? And then the throughput is really high, so we can do you know. We can stream at 8K, no problem. We can do 4K, multiple 4K. I have trouble doing 1080 live stream when I even when I try to bond with a Speedify or something like that. Uh, but you are saying 8K, no problem. That means you can do 16 times more, plus probably way more bit rate. I, yeah. I, I might do two, three, four megabit per second if I'm lucky. Uh, uh, if what that, you will that, do? That, that will be that will be something simple to do. Like a few megabytes. That's that's easy. It's because the millimeter, 5G millimeter, will give you a higher throughput on the, both on the download and the upload, right? So that's the, the beauty about the 5G and millimeter. Um, but the fallback could be also 4G. And then if you are doing 1080p, that's 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 even fine. Um, what we're doing differently with the multi-link aggregation is that. Uh, the algorithms that we're using, and then we're not bonding in the cloud. Like you mentioned, Speedify, they, they basically give you a bonding of the interfaces, but they give you in the cloud. And why they do this? Because they, they are, their main purpose is not to be a bonding multi-link aggregation software. They want to do as well uh, a VPN, right? But we're bonding in the unit. So we're combining all the interfaces in the unit. And what is the benefit of doing this is lowest latency because you're not, you're not having to go to the cloud to combine them, all the interfaces. It happens in the unit. So it's low latency, again, high throughput, and yeah. Happens in the unit. Uh, so it's not like normal bonding. Normal so, bonding is, I thought when I was bonding and I was trying to bond, I thought it would aggregate each there, there SIM card to speed up but that's not what's happening. Yeah, no, no. Normal bonding basically gives you multiple interfaces and then it gives you reliability. That means you're sending the same amount of packets through all the interfaces. So if in the case, maybe one packet doesn't arrive through this interface, maybe this other packet through the other interface will arrive. So it gives you reliability, but then it doesn't increase your pipe, right? If you want to do both, then you can do maybe with the transport layer, right? Like SRT or REST, and then you can aggregate everything. So, uh, and, and uh, for example, my Yulebox Pro doesn't have SRT, and you talk about SRT and also REST, it makes things even smoother, better, and yeah, more reliable. Because because SRT basically has error correction, uh, I mean, embedded into the protocol as well as REST. The beauty about REST is that it can give you up to like average 50% packet loss. And then this is something really unique. Obviously with the downside of, you need to increase a little bit the buffer so you can compensate for then doing repacket retransmission and all this, you know, things that the protocol, uh, the transport uh, layer has, yeah. And, and uh, people can read about this on the... Uh, on Midmo.io, you can go to Midmo.io and learn more. Uh, we're close to launch our B2 version of the platform out of the, you know, closed beta that, we, that we're doing and then you'll be able to sign up um, for free, actually, and then I start using it, start bringing people, devices, and then I start creating content into our platform. And uh, Live, explain time. some of the uh, projects you've had in the past. So recently we did a project with Don and Dustin and, and for TikTok, and then what we did was utilizing the mobile link encoder and then streaming from a mobile phone. We were streaming from the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultras at super low latency, 4K. From the from the from the phone, all the way down through the T-Mobile's private 5G, and then going down to our decoders on site, and then decoding around 10 to 20 um, feeds using the web protocol, which is based on WebRTC. So it's, it was super low latency. We were achieving around 16 to 18 frames um, of end-to-end -end latency, glass to glass, on a 60 FPS base, which is which is really, and then outputting things through SDI, which obviously, as we know, increases latency, but it was still super low latency because we had to deliver to the broadcast truck and SDI. So that was one of the... So Samsung phones to do 4K 60 live streaming. Through the T-Mobile private 5G. How do, how do you get the 4K 60 out of the phone? The phones, most phones nowadays can encode 4K 
as you know, the Samsung S23 Ultra, you can even uh, basically record at 8K. But uh, but the thing is, how do you get it? Like, uh, do you need an app that connects yeah, with what have, you're doing? Yeah. So we have an app for Android, which is called. We're also releasing the app to iOS. It's called Midmo Cam, and then you can stream using your. Can you show how it looks like? Yeah, I can show you. Um, so so this app can take whatever resolution your phone can do yeah, and called, put it into the live stream. Yeah, it's called Midmo Cam, um, and then basically uh, you can switch cameras. You can also switch different microphone sources. And then we support all the normal protocols like web, RTMP, SRT, RES, MDI. How, how do I see the resolution? Um, you can go here, then you go to video, and then you see resolution is... Oh, let me have can, a look here. It can actually go, it depends on the phone that you're using, but basically this is 4K, 2160p. What uh, is this phone? This is the uh, S23 Ultra. So the S23 Ultra, you went in there and... Uh, you even have access to their 8K stuff here? What is this? No, no, no that's... It's just a C4K yeah. or something. Yeah, it's like, yeah, DZI and other weird resolutions that... But somehow you access all these resolutions, yeah. and you just pick the 4K, and yeah. then you pick the frame rate, the frame rate and you can yeah. do 60? Uh, this version, yeah, but we can go up to 60. Samsung has... You need to do some something special to unlock the that my phone doesn't have, but then you can unlock 60 as 60 well. FPS. Most phones and nowadays, 2024 can do 4K 60, no problem. And so that gives you a 4K 60 source for your platform. Yeah, and then we can do 9x16, we can do uh, also landscape. Let me show you. So, you, For example, I just have portrait, but we can also do landscape. And then we just need to flip the phone and then it's landscape. And then we can do with the with the face uh, with the face cam, or we can do with the rear back cameras as well. We can pick any lens basically. And then again, a stream whip, SRT, erase all the protocols. So I, I've been impressed with what Yolo Live has been doing with the Yolo Box, and I also like the Bella Box project. It's kind of cool, and he's doing uh, with the Jetson Nano and a uh, bonding uh, SRT. But you, you, what you're talking about is completely like next level, right? Is is uh, is clearly yeah next level what we're trying to achieve since this is still you know we're showing what we're developing right now you will be able to possibly achieve AK capture as well and this side AK capture in a business but size that, uh, car then you need to have a chip that supports AK yes through Nvidia uh, so we're also capture part, yeah we're also part of the inception program through Nvidia so, so Nvidia supports AK capture on their chips yes. and stuff yep. Oh, wow. All right, so, uh, but uh, I'm happy with 4K60. So if I could capture my Panasonic in a 4K60. This will be well enough. Sorry, the battery died. So thanks a lot for showing all this cool technology. And uh, how soon? How soon uh, so can you figure this we out? We hope to have this unit somewhere maybe Q Q3 this year. Um, and then just uh, be in touch with us, go to our website, follow us in, so in social media, and then Great, it will be great to connect with you guys. Anything you guys have feedback you want us to support, just what's the cost and everything to participate? Uh, we're still figuring out the cost for this. Um, this is more like an enterprise solution, as you know, it's AK capable with. Um, so, and this one obviously, this is more for prosumers, people like you, people that want to you know create content and do live streaming. So there will be and a price for the box. So it will be in the range of less than a thousand. I cannot tell you yeah. exactly because we're still in R&D but the, but our price point should be less than a thousand bucks and once you have this end. box what do you have access to the the whole sh shebang or what you you, you you should be able to connect to our cloud as well to Mimo.io the platform and then bring devices and then use all the functionalities that we that we support but do you do the aggregation and the bonding or just one or the other or what what's no, going to be it will be it will be also happening at the unit side so unit side need, yeah because we so don't, don't need to do cloud uh, bonding. we don't want to do vpn like that's maybe yeah. you want to have an ip in the cloud but for this particular reason you want to just do you know aggregation or reliability bonding right do you think there will be a cost for uh depending if, like let's say i live stream 40 hours at ces and 4k 60 it ha, it'll be it a cost be, for that it will be basically subscription based through our platform and then this will be a kind of a hardware solution that will be signed through third parties um but then it will be a subscription based uh, uh, what's your background and where, where do you come from i mean my background has been 
a lot of things in the past, visual effects. I was a visual effects supervisor and then after that, like maybe six, six years ago, I started more into, into technology, creating platforms, you know, technology based. And then we started Minmo.io in 2020 and it's been great, you know. We're supporting content creators, doing live streams and people like, you know, like you that are trying to create content in live. Because we believe, you know, the future is real time. And uh, you were doing all that in the US or different place or? I mean, we, we have people everywhere. We have, you know, people in India. We have people like myself. I was back in Colombia. I just recently moved to US. But the, the beauty about our platform is that, you know, people can come from different places and collaborate. I had the highest resolution, lowest latency in real time. So you, uh, you have colleagues remote? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. And uh, the, the headquarters for the company? We are in Glendale, in right. California. Yeah. All right. And Kandao? Kandao, they are based in China. They also have um, offices here through our partnership with them. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thanks for awesome. showing all this. Cool. Thank you, guys.